Okay. <laughs> uh, everybody ready? Coach, you start off? Yeah, uh, just thought our defense was, uh, you know, once again, really, really good. Uh, we had a goal coming into the game to try to hold number four, Saeed Pritchett, to, to 13 or less. He ended up getting 15. Uh, the guys were a little bit tired of, of hearing it all week since, since our last game, but we had a siren go off uh, in all of our preparations anytime Saeed Pritchett and the scout team touched the ball um, just to make sure that we did not allow a guy that came in here as one of the nation's leading scorers to, to, to get clean looks. And I thought, you know, his seven turnovers was really, really vital uh, for us defensively. And, you know, we did not shoot the ball well at all. We, didn't, we weren't pretty offensively tonight. Um, but that's what you have to do on nights that you can't score is you gotta, you got to up your defensive intensity. And um, again, you know, Montana really, really struggled from, from three-point area with our defense. And I thought we did a great job closing out the shooters and, and not giving them any clean looks. And once again, we want to clean up our turnovers a little bit better. We're about four or five over where I'd like to be. Uh, and then obviously we got a defensive rebound. I think the biggest thing with our defensive rebounding is just understanding that when you hold teams to such low field goal percentage, you've, you've got to really crash. There's more opportunities for the other team to get, get offensive putbacks. Eric, uh, Adrian had his first double-double career high. And I think the nine rebounds was his previous side. Just what did you think of his game all, all around? Yeah, I think that he's doing a phenomenal job. When he plays that uh, center spot, he's just so quick off the floor. I thought his offensive rebounds were phenomenal. I mean, he had one off a missed free throw that – uh, that was that was awesome. He's a guy that, that has the ability on our team to range rebound. Um, and I thought he played a great all-around game. I mean, we, we played through him a little bit more tonight. He had the ball in his hands a little bit early in the game. We, th we felt like he uh, had a quickness matchup against number 23, Mac Anderson, and, and uh, felt like he could maybe outreact him to the glass. And, 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 and he went ahead and did that, certainly on the, on the offensive boards. Coach, could you, could you evaluate Mason's play through, through three games? He's going to be a constant on the offensive end. Yeah, I think he's done a great job. I mean, two of our last three games, he's done a really good job late game as we've kind of milked the clock, um, running him in middle pick and rolls. And, and so you got your four man handling the ball uh, in pick and rolls, which most four men that are guarding him, they're not used to that. Um, and so I think it causes a little bit of matchup problems, and he's done a great job of converting his free throws. He's so crafty and kind of herky-jerky and, and, and stop and start, um, changes speeds. He, he does a great job of, of, of understanding how to get the defense off its feet to, to draw FTAs, uh, free throws attempted. And, you know, that's one thing that we're really happy with offensively tonight. We finally got to the foul line, um, which, which – in the past has been a big part of our team is getting a lot of three ball attempts and then mixing it in and being a high volume free throw attempt team. In the first two games, you know, we were disappointed in, in our FTAs and not getting to the line more. Glad to see how they compensated for Isaiah's off night for our shooting. And, yeah, and I thought Isaiah was, was off the charts great defensively. I mean, he guarded Pritchett some, he guarded Manuel, who's a transfer from Oregon State and the guy that had some good years uh, for, for the Beavers in Oregon State. And, and uh, sometimes your shot just doesn't fall. Um, we didn't tell him to stop shooting. We wanted him to, to continue to shoot. And, um, but again, he rebounded the basketball and, and uh, thought he did a really, really great job for us defensively. Who played Saeed on your scout team? Where, where do you get a siren for practice? And, and I guess, who did you think did the best? I, I, you guys were switching around, obviously. Who all did, did you think? You know, he, did a good job on him. Jimmy Witt started on him um, and guarded him a lot. Um, then Mason went to him um, about the 10-minute mark, 11-minute mark of the, of the second half uh, and did a really, really good job. Um, and then and, and Isaiah was on him a little bit. Uh, so that whole group and Pat Eckerman somehow found a siren somewhere, um, and we were able to utilize that. And who played him in practice? A multitude of guys, but mainly Reggie. Yep, we felt like Pritchett was strong, and, and uh, he plays in the mid-post so much that we thought Reggie would be um, a good look for us. Coach, it, it seems like your team does a great job in terms of sense of urgency and, and recognizing how possession basketball is so critical both ends of the floor. But in particular, you guys are up 40 to 33. 
and there was a possession there where you had a bunch of rebounds. And it was just the way you were able to close out this game. What do you think about the way you guys were able to close out tonight? Yeah, certainly, um, you know, we've been in kind of two games where that thing was right at seven or eight. And, and uh, if you don't get a defensive rebound or you don't get a stop, that thing can get to five or four. And uh, one of the things that we talk to our team about, we come in every day. Uh, first thing we do at practice, we start talking about the upsets around the country uh, that happen uh, or teams that uh, let people hang around and don't close games. And then they look up at the scoreboard and you're like, wow, we just lost a game. Um, and so we have great respect for everybody we play. Uh, we walked in that locker room tonight. We talked about Montana for about two minutes, and then we went right into Texas Southern. And their depth charts up on up on our chalkboard when they walk in every after every game. The next team's opponents up on up on our board, and there's some key notes about who we play next. And uh, you know, it's on to Texas Southern, and how can we beat them? And so uh, I think just the. Uh, you know, the players understanding how the coaching staff is, is, I don't know what word to use, my wife would say uptight about every game and, and having great respect for them and uh, building up your opponent and, and really finding the strengths of, t of the team that you're playing and trying to emphasize those to your basketball team instead of, you know, talking about things that maybe they're deficient at. Uh, we really stress things that the opponents do really well each and every game. You know, Desi, he still hasn't hit a three, but he's doing other things. He's scoring other ways, getting some steals, getting some boards. Just what, what do you thought of him these first three games, even though he hadn't hit a three yet? Yeah, I think his energy's been great. You know, I think like he's not that there's no quarters in this game, obviously, but if you kind of simulate like a fourth quarter, he's come in and made big defensive plays, and kind of that last ten minutes has has given us some easy baskets in transition. Whether it's a defensive deflection, he's done a great job of attacking the rim in transition on that left side of the floor, and his shot's going to fall. I mean, we just want him to keep shooting them and shoot them with confidence. And then you alluded to the defense. This is three straight games under fifty. Did, did you anticipate that, or did you see that coming, or just what, what do you think about that? No, I mean, this is uh, – they've really bought in to the game plan defensively. You know, hopefully we can, we can keep, keep buying in on a, on, a, you know, on a nightly basis. But they uh, – I think they really like playing defense. I think they, they, they've really quickly got a grasp of what we're trying to do defensively. And there's, you know, there's areas we've got to get better – uh, in some areas as well, but um, you know, I think contesting shots and understand the importance of every defensive possession. They've they've been really really good so far. Box scores is correct. Only seven players uh, got in tonight. Is that something you think you'll continue to stay with? And you know, what about fatigue level moving forward? You know, playing that few. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think if you. Uh, Go look at the box scores at Nevada for the last four years. Um, probably going to see seven and a half guys, meaning seven or eight guys. Um, you know, every coach, every program has their own philosophy on that. Um, I'd rather have a tired Isaiah Joe shooting than somebody else. Um, so we'll roll with whatever we, however many players we think it takes to win on that night. Uh, I might be you know, one of few coaches that believe that uh, 30 college games, uh, 18 to 22 year old people uh, that play one or two games a week uh, are able to play 37 minutes. Uh, I come from a completely different world where you play 82 games and uh, you get in at two o'clock in the morning and you wake up and play a game at, at four in the afternoon sometimes on weekends. So uh, I think you got to use your bench in the NBA although Tom Thibodeau would probably disagree. Uh, but here, you know, we're just going to, we're not going to just pass out minutes to pass out minutes. You got to earn them in practice and you got to earn them understanding the game plan. And, and then when your number's called, you just got to be ready to play. Final question, Bob? Yeah, I think uh, Mason still hadn't missed a free throw. I think he's 17 and 17 the last two games. I didn't think it was whatever, whatever that first game. Uh, what, what do you thought of that? He's been perfect so far. Bob, don't jinx him. We're not supposed to talk about that. He's been great from the from the charity stripe, and um, we don't want to talk about it because it's kind of like a baseball hitter that's hot. Right, Thanks. Yep. Thank you, guys.